Welcome to a, another fabulous interview um, for my go-to expert playlist here on YouTube. Now, when you start your business journey, it can be a really, really lonely place. You are the everything in your business. You are taking out the rubbish. You are making the coffee. You are the marketing director. You are the sales director. You're the CEO and all those other letters. And it can be a really, really lonely place, which is why I bring my fabulous experts into the room to share their highlights, their golden nuggets to help you on your journey. My name is Lindsay Burden and I'm an intuitive business coach and I inspire, guide and motivate women to create incredibly successful or wildly successful as I like to call them businesses and a time rich lifestyle. And today I have Amanda Foster with me, development officer for the Enterprise Network. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning. Wow, I'm, I'm on fire already after hearing that introduction because it's all true and I know how wonderful you are. Ah, thank you. But you're the development officer at the Enterprise Network. But some, I mean, if somebody is in the listening or watching from the other side of the world, they won't know what that is. So can you tell us a little bit about the Enterprise Network and what it does and its role and purpose? Yes, certainly. So the, the Enterprise Network is really about helping those people that are starting their journey out in business. So imagine you've started your business and you're doing all those things that you just mentioned, but you're doing it on the dining room table and your partner you know, wants to serve dinner, but you've got all this project stuff you need to do or you're in the spare room. So the Enterprise Network is that next step. Everything is a step-by-step -step process. And what the Enterprise Network allows you to do is to have that safe working environment. Yeah. So whether you choose to have a post box, whether you choose to have a office or a co-working space, it gives you that next step. It gives you that breathing. More importantly, it gives you that working space. So that's what we're about. Exactly. And we're going to come back to that, um, I know, because we wanted to talk today about some of the challenges. Now, you've had a business. Um, you have quite an entrepreneurial family. You are an incredible woman in Salisbury, where we live. And <laughs> always out there you know cheering on the business community and an ambassador for the business community mm -hmm. so I think if anyone can talk about some of the challenges I think you and I can do that so what do you think the biggest challenge is and I was thinking about this question earlier because you know you and I have been around a little while do you think the challenges have changed over the last 10-15 years? I think the principal challenges are probably the same, but they have. They've changed and adapted because the way things are. So being in business is is inspiring and, you know, there's an awful lot of perspiration and thought about it. It's great, but it can be incredibly lonely. Yeah. And, you know, human beings, as much as we need our moments alone, we need to have our moment around that, that's awful phrase, the water cooler. We need to bond with people. And, and I think that's changed that, you know, COVID got a lot of people, you know, working from home and it was a bit of a novelty. It was great. You know, I can walk down my garden to my garden room to do this, that and the other. But certainly we find here that people enjoy that, but they miss the human contact. And, and I think you need that because you need to share your ideas. Like now, you know, having a conversation, we're like, brilliant, we're on fire. You need that. You need your thinking time. But then you need your sharing and you need your, whether you call it networking, you know, mentoring, whatever it is, you need that interaction. And, and that's what the, the combination here does. And I think we need that as human beings. I was just thinking as you were talking then, it's when people start their business or even if they're, you know, fledgling two, three years, I like to call them mm. little the fledglings or you've been in business a long time. It's not just a lonely place from that emotional and physical place, but it can feel really hard work. And I wonder well, not I wonder, I know, we often feel that as business owners, we have to hold all our problems in, we can't share them, yeah. we can't be vulnerable. And I think that's a challenge for business owners as well. I don't know what you think, that that vulnerability it, can be hard. It, it is, and, and the thing is, we're all going, yes, we're fine, um, but everybody else is, is sharing that. They're sharing that pinch point. And it's really important that... Um, you know, people have that coffee and that chat and you go, do you know what, I'm having this issue? And they go, well, yeah, I had that issue and this is how I resolved it. And it's really important that we do that sharing. It doesn't make us, you know, less worthy, less experts in our field. It makes us human. And we humans dealing with other human bits and bobs and businesses. Yeah. So, yeah, you need to share it. You need to have that, that safe place 
and you know you'll find people that you don't mind sharing bits and bobs with but and they go yeah i'm glad you said that i'm having that problem as well you've got to, you've got to talk yeah and you've got to be vulnerable haven't you i'm just wondering as well i mean we're here in salisbury and you just mentioned covid but before that we also had um novichok okay. yeah there is a, a drama on that called Salisbury Poisonings, if, you've, if you don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, and I think for when I look at Salisbury, it shows that at times when we need to be, we can be really adaptable and we can be flexible and we can use that horrible word that everyone used in 2020, that pivoting word. But actually, I think that shows real resourcefulness, but we shouldn't have to wait for a grand thing to happen Exactly. to have that ability should we no i mean i've just written down opportunity of being adaptable and i think you know souls we certainly proved that and you're quite right you know why wait for a disaster till you go well i've been meaning to do that and you know certainly people that we, we were involved in going around and speaking to the businesses um then and that was really interesting two things came out of that one some people use it as an excuse oh well i can't do that but two people use it as an opportunity mm. so instead of looking this way they went oh i could go down that route and and you've got to do that and, and unfortunately because it's part of the comfort zone people don't do that and, and you need to come out of your comfort zone sometimes and go i'm going to give that a go you know this is something new and exciting and, and i'm going to give it a go. as it says in your thing that expand into your dreams you know if there's a thought process there take it seize it run with it I think that's also, though, about mindset and having a growth <clears throat> mindset and seeing, OK, this is happening. How can I adapt? How can I change? How can I use this as an opportunity? And there were so many businesses that during you know COVID and for us here in Salisbury, um, during um, Novichok as well, they went, OK, how can I do this differently? How can right. I adapt and how can I move? But that really is a mindset. And I'm wondering, actually if that mindset that we have to work on on a daily basis mm. is easier to work on for some not all when you're part of a community when you're with people when you've got people around you which is where you know again the enterprise network comes into play or any other shared business space where people Definitely. come together it, we can have a building but it's the people in the building or around the table that make the difference. And, and I, if I may, let me give you an example. So we've got 10, 15 businesses that are in their offices. So imagine they're all going off to the little rabbit hutches and they come out. We have a, a, a networking area here. And at lunchtime, you will find three or four of the guys sat down there with really very nice smelling food as well. They don't know this sandwich lot. They're very, very good. And, and I've often listened. Now, I'm not blessed with children, but I think, oh, my boys, aren't they doing well? Because they'll sit there, they'll have their lunch, and they go, I've, I've had this issue with, with a customer, I'm not quite sure. And then somebody else said, well, what I did, I did it this way. So it's a community. It's a safe place where they can share. And then, you know, we have a new person come in, and he went, oh, yeah, I can, I can tell you about that. I did this. And you're like... That's what it's about. So whether it's a coffee shop, whether it's in your office, in a, in a bigger company, you need that safe place to share. Now, I just want to pick up something, not to tell you off, but you used the word guys, and I know that was a collective guys, but then you, yes. talk, then you talked about your boys. So that brings up something interesting. So are we seeing more women coming through and starting up businesses and looking for that next step what's the balance with you and what are you seeing and are you seeing a difference from 15 years ago i think there's a difference because um it's the boys that sort of do that down here but in the in the centers we are probably we're probably still a 60 40 60 chaps 40 yeah. ladies the ladies are like right i'm gonna go for it you know we're the guys might ponder and it takes them a while to share but in the in the sort of the female networks and bits and bobs that we had to have a few years ago which you were an absolute star with, with the women on wednesday is i think we gather our feet a bit quicker than the chaps do and we are more receptive to sharing 
And that's why I find it surprising with the guys doing it here. Mm. Whereas, with, you know, one of the, if one of the ladies passes, um, I mean, obviously no names, no petrol, so we call her Jemima. And, and you know, um, she's not called Jemima, I'm honest. But, you know, she said, well, I've just been having a chat with so-and-so and we managed to do this, fantastic. Well, shall we organise something? And then within moments, bing, we've got a gathering, you know, and, and people will, will follow and they'll share. So I, I do think there's a slight different mentality, whereas, Maybe it's an ego thing that it takes them a while, but certainly the you know, the guys here, once they've got comfortable, they will share. I think the the ladies, we've always been used to just cracking on, but yeah. we still have those inner feelings, and we still need to share, and we still need support. But I think we're slightly easier and, and more relaxed about doing that. Yeah, and I I've always said, I mean, the reason you know I originally started up the the women's networking group. Well, originally I started it because actually networking in the morning didn't work for everyone if you had children, and I didn't exactly. have any time. Um, <laughs> but women network slightly different. We want to get to know someone. We want to build that relationship yeah. with them, and then when we you know we do, we I think women are more open and want to support each other. And that's not saying that men don't, but I think and if we're really honest, I think it's harder for men because they're the breadwinner and all, you know, all those yeah. ancestral things that we've brought with us from the fifties, yeah. you know, so I think it's a challenge and I'm wondering, and I didn't realize this is where the conversation was going to go, but it feels like <laughs> the goalposts are moving for both men and women in business in a really good way. Hmm. I, I think so. You know, you, you think when we started networking, you go to an event and there'd be people in the suits and it would be, you know, nothing against solicitors and accountants because they make the world go around. <laughs> but it, it was considered that networking and, and that was their territory. Mm. And, uh, um, you know, I, I always said as part of the chamber, I, I want the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, the mechanic, the, you know, because we all make the world go round. We've yeah. all got something to share. And, and you know, we're all putting that pound into the economy. I don't care who spent the pound and where the pound came from, within reason. But, um, you know, there is, I think it has changed and, and certain things have got a bit more relaxed, a little bit more open. So if you go to, so the, we, we had a, a, an early networking breakfast here, and I would say that that was 50-50 yeah. of people. And what I thought was hilarious, well, not maybe not hilarious, but I, I inwardly chuckled to myself, that when people stand up and do their elevator pitch or this, that, and the other, all us ladies were quite eloquent at doing it. And, and one of the guys was like, I feel really nervous doing this. Expert in his field, really switched on when you speak to him one-to-one, -to -one, but he said, I feel nervous. And you know, afterwards I said to him, just stand up and use that passion that you've said to me. You know, that, that's all it is. It's, it's not a test and don't try and cram too much in it. But yeah, it's definitely changed because 10, 15 years ago, there would be very few ladies in the room. Now it's certainly 50-50 yeah. and, and we shine. Yeah, we've talked a little bit about the loneliness of working for yourself and at that kitchen table and that you know we you mentioned the water cooler moments and they are hmm. the times you know and we all know those when you know for those of us that are in business we remember when we were employed and you'd you know making the coffee and someone go oh have you heard this and this is happening and yeah. it, that human connection that you referred to but also where you bounce those ideas what other challenges do you think business owners are seeing now um, and perhaps that they weren't seeing 15 years ago? I think everything is sharper. Everything has to be a lot quicker. Yeah. And, you know, whereas, that, you know, was it fake it till you make it? That people are like, no, I know about that. But evolution, there's lots of things. And, you know, the guy that invented the wheel probably had to really go, this is going to be really good. So I think the challenges are still there. Um, people feel that they need to be a lot more credible. And I think they do need to have that support that's there to, to allow them to do that. Because I really firmly believe that, you know, in soldiery, we could have the next rocket scientist, we could have the next amazing playwright, but we've got to give them a, a, the space and the encouragement to do that. And, you know, the, the, the work that you're doing, that encourages just people to think beyond their dreams you know hopefully at the enterprise center we give them the the space to do that and then like-minded individuals to share because you know 20 years ago you go well i'm going to do this and people go really where it's now it's like really okay you know tell me how, how what are you planning on doing so i probably haven't answered the question directly on there but i think the <laughs> challenges are there but <clears throat> it's got to be quicker it's got to be sharper it's got to be slicker 
And, and, and people shouldn't worry about that. Embrace the expert. That's good. Okay, well, I can do this bit, but I can't do that. So I'm going to get some slick guy with some advertising. I'm going to have a chat with him. You know, I'm going to use this. Uh, you know, you don't be frightened to say, I can't do this, but I can do this. Yeah, there were two things that came up for me. I think you that everything's got to be faster and it's better and it's got to be sharper and we've got to move forward. And I think that can actually feel really overwhelming and oh, very so daunting. Um, and then you mentioned the word credibility. So for me, there are, and maybe they're linked. I was talking to someone recently who um, said, well, I can't do that yet because I don't have any credibility, is what they were saying. I haven't mm. done it yet. But we've all had to start somewhere. And everyone exactly. started with no clients, no customers, no patients, whatever mm. it is you did. Um, but I think now in this day and age, we have this real weight on our shoulders that we can't do it quicker smarter better until we've got the credibility but you yes. have to start you know they're, they're all linked yeah. aren't they so yeah. that credibility and and I was able to and this comes back to support I was able to say but you've been doing this this and this doesn't that prove that you can do x and exactly. then like, yeah yeah but they didn't pay me no but you've still been doing it that you you mm. have the knowledge and the expertise so I wonder if that faster smarter quicker and sharper which is a great word and really you know encapsulates what we are talking about in, in this section it can almost be off-putting to business owners or Definitely. you know those who want to start a business well mm -hmm. actually I would say it's your business and it should always be on your terms exactly and if you don't start you will never find ways to be quicker, sharper, you know, yeah. more efficient. So we have to start. So I think if we are saying anything in this section, it's about if you've got a business idea, go out, talk to people and start. Mm. What is the one thing you need to do to start? And yeah. we've mentioned being at the kitchen table. You know, I definitely, that's where I started at the kitchen table, which wasn't, you know, great when you had two small kids, you know, it wasn't <laughs> the best place to be working, you know, and, and sticky food on the bottom of your laptop is never great. <laughs> but we have to start somewhere. And I think what I love about the Enterprise Network and all the other organizations across the country who offer these shared workspaces is it gives you that gap for some businesses. It's the, the bridge, isn't it, between moving from your kitchen table to the next level it just gives you that bridging yeah. with the additional support mm. and access to help support community the water cooler moments that mm. really can be the difference and I know when we were talking before you know you're you've certainly talked about business owners who have gone from that kitchen table into you and, and into the enterprise network and you know they've gone from an office with one desk and now they've moved to two desks and exactly. it's the next step and it's the next step. Yeah. and I wonder if actually what the enterprise network and all the other fabulous organizations that offer that shared space I wonder if it also helps with confidence I, I think it does it, as we've said it's got to be a step-by-step -step process but it's it's being around like-minded people and you, and you th tend to think well they've managed it yeah. And it allows you to bring that confidence, you know, that credibility. Well, I've done that, so I can do the next thing. And I think that's really important because to show people that come into here, into the Enterprise Network, to say, let me give you an example. You know, and, and the, the person that you, you were talking about were over at Castle Down, and they literally started with, well, I, I'm just going to start doing this. Right, okay, fabulous. And, and I think we should ban the word just. Um, and they progressed. And so they've gone from a letterbox to a single desk to a double desk, then going, we need more space. Then now in a, in a proper unit, as I call it, you know, in a rental agreement, so big boys, ones, we're very flexible here, but into a five year deal, they're knocking through to the next place. And they've probably got nearly about 900 square foot of office space Incredible. and about 14 employers. And <clears throat> it's having that confidence and, it, and it's to see they've done that. So I can do that. Yeah. And don't be afraid of it. You can do, you know, you and I, when we both started out, <clears throat> I remember having a, a conversation down Fishton Street, you know, when you were down there and going, I quite want to do this. And I go, well, I quite like doing this. And it's just like, it was that, let's do it. And, and you've got to do that. You know, what have you got to lose? Be around those like-minded people. And how do you eat an elephant? Well, you eat an elephant, you know, one bit at a time. Yeah.
master the trunk, get onto the ears, you know, go, apologies to any vegetarians out there. But, but we're it. not recommending that you actually eat an elephant. <laughs> no, there's, there's not enough elephants in the world, quite frankly. But, you know, break it down. I, I love a good list, you know, and have a list and go, right, I've done that. And you feel confident. You know, it must be like it, not that I'm a runner, but, you know, I'm going to start the couch. Right, I need to do start that couch to 5K. Yeah. You don't start off running it a million miles right. an hour. You yeah. start walking it. So walk your journey with business. Get yourself a good mentor. Get yourself that space. And then you're with other people, like a park run. And business surely is, is exactly the same. You know, I had to grab my boys. pen quickly because that walk oh, yes. your journey is it it's absolutely right you know we see and i and i really think you know not to labor the point about social media because it has its place and everything else but i think it sets this it puts an image out that you have a business idea and you're successful oh. overnight that you can have the the ferrari in your driveway and the incredible home and the chauffeur and all of that and it, it mm. really puts out this image that it can happen it can happen overnight and yeah. actually one, that's not what we're all aiming for in a Ferrari. I would not get my kids in, so that's of no use to exactly, yeah. ever. You know, so it's really important to recognise what success is for you and start your journey, to walk your journey. And I am going to have to borrow that because I may have to write a blog because that is genius. <laughs> and that's that starting point. You start and then you walk your journey towards your success. Exactly. You, you gather that momentum. You gather that confidence. You know, it, it, I've done that so I can do it again. I've done that, I can do it again. I can do it. Brilliant. Well, let's get something else out there. And we all do it. We all go, well, look at that. You know, I, I bought, I've looked in the catalogue and that supermodel looks lovely. It's like, I don't look like that and I put it on. Well, I'm not a supermodel. Mm. I'm me. I'm quite unique. And you get one for you. No, you get, right, I'm feeling good. And you've got to get that inward which is sometimes the hardest battle for some people. It is always the hardest battle. But if, if you can get that and go, do you know what, I can do that. So if I can digress just a little bit, I know, I'm, you know I never do this. So went to the Playhouse yesterday to see the, the new production there. And um, I got asked, oh, have you ever done any of this? I went, no, but I said, I had my light bulb moment on the stage um, of the Playhouse during the Southwest Business of the Year Awards. I think it was 2012 I can't remember when I was a judge and everybody else beside me was really quite nervous is the politest way of putting it and I got up there and I was like I love this I didn't have a note so I said what I needed to say and I literally thought do you know what I'm not three bad at this I want to do more and, and I would encourage anybody you know whether you start in plumbing whether you're going to be a VA whatever you're going to do if you go do that and you go oh I'm not too bad at that Remember that feeling. Yeah. Start that journey. You know, go for it because I'm smiling thinking about it because it was so amazing. And it, and you know that gave me probably seven years of self employment and work and doing bits and bobs. You know, and then things change. You know, you go, oh, actually, I'm not going to turn this direction. Don't be frightened of change, and don't be frightened of changing direction and looking at something completely differently. You never know where that path leads. I had to grab my pen again because you raise oh. a really, really interesting point. I know it's 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 my age. If I don't write it down, I can't remember. Yeah. And yeah. then I have noticed that when I write, I put my head down and people can see my roots. So apologies. Um, <clears throat> but I have to write it. <laughs> I have to write it down. Yeah, you've said something. Okay, don't be frightened of change. I think the other thing is we go into business and we think, oh, we have just got to do, we just got to do. Or if perhaps you've gone into business and you're going, do you know what? I don't think this is for me. It's okay to change your mind. Exactly. It's okay. And I've known over the years that, you know, you and I have been around in Salisbury, I've known people to, you know, that I, I knew because they had a business, mm. then they were employed, then they came back with another business idea. That didn't mean to say that their first one okay. failed. They just went, do you know what? I'm not sure this is right for me. Or an incredible opportunity has landed, exactly. which you know, was an employment opportunity. Do you know what? And I know... Maybe it's a bit harder for us as we get older. When we're younger, I, you know, I was think, do you know what? You leave school, try this. If you don't like it, try something else. Keep Definitely. going. But as we get older, we're frightened of doing that. So I think that's another key message we're trying to get across here, which we didn't know we were going to try and get. <laughs> that it's okay 
to change your mind. It's okay to change the journey that you're walking. And that's yeah. a really important thing to understand because I would hate anyone to be really working their little socks off to exactly. in a business that they no longer love, that they no yeah. longer feel connected to. I want them to go, do you know what? It's it, okay to stop. Yeah, it's that's very important. And not necessarily work in, in thing, but sort of, you know, my, my passion and my hobby was being um, a TA, a reservist. And... Um, offered very limited trading because it was a million years ago and it's like you could be a clerk you could be a cook and I was like well I do admin at work I'll, I'll have a go at doing cooking which explains you know <laughs> my recipe but but I really enjoyed it and, and and I'd love cooking out in the field and then one day I thought I really I'm not enjoying this and it got to be a bind and and it's just like I'm gonna stop so I stopped and I went and did something else and you've got to do that. And I've written down saying no. As a business owner, it's okay to say no to a client. Yeah. If you get that, you're all, you know, yeah. hairs on the back of your neck. I don't like, it's really difficult because you're thinking you've got to say yes, but say no. No is so, next opportunity. That's what it stands for. It's like, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to look at the next opportunity. And, you know, saying no to lots of things enables you to go and grab a yes elsewhere. Yeah, I'm so glad you said that. <clears throat> oh, we're covering a lot today. Because, <laughs> yeah, I, I really hear you. And, you know, that's some of the work that I do with a lot with my clients. You know, so why have you said yes to this client? They're not aligned with you. And we know exactly. when we say yes to something that doesn't feel right, it's going to be really hard work. You mm. know, and if it's a client, they are going to suck the life out of you. Exactly. Um, and it's the same as anything, saying no to clients that you're not aligned with, projects you're not aligned with, opportunities yeah. you're not aligned with. Because when you say no, you're creating space for the incredible to come along, the perfect, exactly. life, the, you know, the best opportunity you could ever dream of. Mm. So learning to say no in business, particularly early on, is absolutely key to your future success. Oh. And it will really help you develop a business. It, it says you value yourself. Yes. And the minute we value ourselves, it is reciprocated and others value us too. That's mm. a really valuable lesson. And I'm so glad that you brought that to the table. And, and I think people, you know, on reflection, they will respect that decision. And, you know, maliciously bring it back, back to here, back to, you know, what we offer at the Enterprise Network is, you know, we very rarely say no to somebody coming in, but I also say to them, I explain what else is out there in the city, and I explain to them that you need to give this a test drive. It's like anything. Mm -hmm. This might not be for you. This space might not be for you, but come along. Give it a go. Meet, meet the other tenants. Have that working space. But if it's not for you, you know, I... I'm not going to be devastated and go, well, I'm not going to speak to you again. You know, we, we've had people that have come here and they go, this, this isn't quite working. I said, yeah, I know. What you need to do is you need to come over there. The, 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 I am the proverbial scarecrow, directional. You know, I'm quite happy to do that. I want to see people succeed. No, yes, ideally, my KPIs should tell me that I need them all here, but I'm not about that. And the Enterprise Network isn't really about that. Mm. It's about giving somebody the opportunity to say yes to being here and then going... Do you know what? That's great, but I need to move on. And that's what business owners ought to feel empowered about, about making choices. We don't always make the right choice. Should I have drunk that cup of coffee this morning? Maybe not. Should I have done that? You know, you, you, you've got to do that. But if not, I would have been grumpy because I hadn't had a brew. And, you know, if I, if I had never tried certain things in business, then I would have definitely kicked myself, but I'm glad I tried it. And then I went, you know what? That's not for me. And then, you know, I got involved in a project which was terribly exciting and I knew there was something quite right and I stepped back and it hurt me a lot. It hurt me financially, but you don't know. What yeah. did I waste? I wasted, and I don't think I wasted, I had six months of a really interesting project. I walked away with my integrity because I wasn't prepared to do what was being requested. Uh, but I made some new contacts and I learned something about myself. Yeah. And I think, you know, you know um, I did a podcast episode recently and we were talking about, you know, as many mistakes as you need. And we, as long as we're learning, because there are exactly. no mistakes really, but as long, you know, if, if something doesn't work out quite right or it doesn't go to plan or, you know, just doesn't pan out as you thought or expected or hoped, 
you know, there is always a learning there. Exactly. And I think the other message to get across is if you're saying no to someone, whether it's you saying no to someone coming into the enterprise network, I know you say you never say no, but you know, if it, yeah, yeah. no. And when I say no to a client, it's not because they're a bad client, they're a bad no. business owner. It's because the fit's not right. And the fit exactly. is absolutely key. And that's the same in many things, you know, finding a mentor, a business coach, an mm. accountant, the fit has to be right. And I would always say, and we've alluded to it several times, listen to that feeling in the gut. You mentioned the hairs yes. on the back of your neck. You, you will have physical signs when you know something's not quite right. It is okay to walk away. It is okay to say no. Exactly. And that I would say is one of the biggest lessons that business owners need to learn and learn and learn fast because it will mm. help you to open up the opportunities and take you on that journey that you're walking to the success that you want in a way that feels exactly great. and you know don't, don't be um don't be suffocated by your ego or the ego that other people you know seem to think that should be there yeah you know if you if you fall down then brilliant you know don't wear stilettos to walk up kilimanjaro it ain't gonna work it might look nice at the top but in order to get there, you know, you've got to roll your sleeves up and just crack on. Yeah, oh, Amanda, don't... it's been fabulous talking to you. I knew it would be. And I knew that we would come up with um, lots of gems <laughs> beyond the water cooler. But I just want to spin back because I want to pick you up on what you said earlier. And you mentioned rabbit hutches um, at the Enterprise Network. Now, I've been to the Enterprise Network and that's doing them a disservice. It um, is. It is. But... Give us a little insight into the types of rooms that you've got. And most importantly, if somebody is in this local area, although the Enterprise Network has um, locations across Wiltshire, I believe. I might yes. Say, yeah. Where where do they need to go? What's the website address that they need to visit? So the, the, the website of opportunity for your journey is um, www. So the enterprise network .co .uk. Okay. And um, it it will show you that you can literally start off with a post box. Do you need a room for just to have that meeting? So you're still at the kitchen table stage and we get a lot of people now that are, are using a desk for a day where they come in, we can give them that space. And, you know, it has the persona then that this is their office. It helps them have interviews with people, things like that, but they can come along. All our offices are really unique. Um, in, in both, well, certainly both of my centres, um, as, as well as the centres at Norther County at Trowbridge and at Caution, but there's a, there could be a room for you, and it's a matter of finding the room that suits, really. So please do have a look at the website and, and come and chat. You know, we'll put the kettle on. We don't have a water cooler, but we have a kettle and we have some tea and coffee, and and I believe that's what it's about because it is the people in the building that make it work. So. Have a look if we can help you, fabulous. But come and have a look, have a brew, have a wander around and, and feel the space. You know, it might be a bit woo wee for some people, but that's what it's about. Yeah. And I've been into the one in Salisbury and I've hired the meeting room for training and I've been there for networking events. And it, there is always a warm welcome and it is mm. a really great space. I do have a quick practical question. I don't know if anyone else is interested, um, but I'd like to know. So if you hire um, or rent, I don't know what the term is, one of your offices, can mm -hmm. we make it our own? Obviously, perhaps not paint it black or something, but can you put your own picture well, and stuff up? Funny you should, funny you should say that. <laughs> I uh, need to know this. Yes. Within reason, yes, you can, because I think that's it, it's that nest building scenario. Yeah. So, yes, you can do that. They, what I say is they all come vanilla flavoured. And if you want to add a few sprinkles and a, and a couple of pictures, then you can do. People that have served think about a march in and a march out. So when you finish, if you can put it back, example, though, one of our tenants over at Castledown, she did paint the walls and she did this, the other, and I said, do you know what? They look really nice, leave them like that. So it's like anyway, you know, if you ha if you get borrow a toy, you want to hand it back and it's that sort of, but you can very much make it yours and and i would like to see people do that because that gives you that oh this is my space i certainly did you know everybody's probably got a calyx ikea you know cabinet in the in the office because they're great but other brands you know, are available other brands are available um but you know some pictures you know if you want to paint a wall then, then don't do it and ask for forgiveness <laughs> ask me 
not a problem. We'll work with you. But yeah, you need to, it's your office. You shut the door and you want to be as creative as possible. So, you know, if, if unlike me, you kill plants, I see you've got a nice plant there. Bring some plants in, do whatever you need to do. Make it your space. And when you come in, um, now I'm asking some really technical questions, but you know, there might be someone out there going, I need to go. Presumably that rental cost, that higher cost includes your heating, electric. Well, the, exactly. So, so the, the main thing here is we are flexible. I might not be, <laughs> I can't, but we're flexible. So we run on, on a month by month basis because we understand how businesses work. And you might be, there might be a couple of lean months coming up and you go, I'm just going to have to rein that back in. And you go, right, okay. So, and we have people sometimes swap offices or change, but um, yeah, it, it's flexible. It's there. It, you, you know, you could do it. It's and your it includes space. everything. Everything you could possibly do. Uh, so, Half in your laptop. Without, so the, I'm not going to discuss the figures because that, but basically, when I had my office here, I knew what the, the rent was and there was no extras. So you, we set up your Wi Fi, you've got power, you've got your office, you've got a post box. There's, we include refreshments, well, only tea and coffee, gin's not allowed, but tea and coffee, um, so that you can budget. So the way I used to figure it out is like, right, that's what I need to pay each month. And I figured that actually, really, I only needed probably three clients for three hours. I didn't work that way. I worked a lot more than that because I thought, right, that's my rental. That's my tax. That's my pay. Everything else I can really go for. And that, again, is a key basic, isn't it? Knowing what your outgoings are. So we're not going to say to you, I'm afraid you walk through there. That's going to be extra money. If you want a meeting room, yes, that's extra. Your office, set price, everything included. That's no so business rates, nothing else you then know what you're dealing with. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to bring it in because I think it's important that people yeah. know that, particularly if they're watching and they're in the local area. Amanda, you have been incredible. Thank you so much for joining me today. Lindsay, as ever you're a star, keep shining because you've spread that light throughout the city. Thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome.